Hello there, it's Crafty Aunt T. Um, I wanted to show you today, this is my third attempt at showing you <laughs> this album. I started out um, making this first section, which I'm going to call a folio. I made the first folio on camera. It was a good video, wouldn't have required much editing. Um, got it all done and it was like, this. You couldn't see anything that was going on. So I did the second one and it's essentially the same as the first. It's just decorated differently. So I did that one on camera and it was early in the morning. I was more or less whispering to not wake anybody up and um, realized that I never really gave you dimensions or exactly how to and it was supposed to be a how-to video. So now this album is nearly done. And I haven't showed you yet how to do it, so um, I'm going to start a new one and do it the same way this one has been done with these same pages. And uh, in fact, I'm going to do a couple of things differently. For one thing, if you want to stitch, you know, you can stitch these pages easily, but if you wanted to stitch where you've um, layered the paper onto the base, then you have to do that. You have to make that decision and do that before you assemble it. So I think I'll do some of the stitching. And also, I'm going to round the corners. This one doesn't have any rounded corners. But aside from that, I'm going to show you how to make just a base that you can cover with any papers that you want to. Now, this one's not quite complete. It's you know, 90%, maybe 85% complete. But what I did was I made each of the two folios and added pockets and different things and envelopes and decorated them. The paper kit I used, and I'll use it again today, is um, from Digi Doodads, and it is Tea Party. And this middle section is some of the writing papers and the I call these frames, but you could certainly write on those or put photographs in. And I put plenty of those. And then the back section is another one of the folios. Just a big pocket here on the front. They they both have, I haven't made them yet. There's room for a big photo mat in the, whoop, in the ends of the uh, pages. And then this one, instead of having the fold out, um, tag pages. This one has four flip outs like that and it's got a magnet here and then in here so that it will stay shut and a big pocket back on the back and then um, this I hadn't really decided what to do. I, I put the decorative paper and there was a bubble so I put this frame, I may put another pocket here, I haven't decided yet. And then um, the cover, I just semi-finished the cover. I see that it's gathering dust like crazy. Um, and so I'm going to make just a band to go around this, I think. Nothing fancy. I did get out one of those Tim Holtz, uh, you know, lock and key things, but I think I'll just put a band around it. And it's, it's got a pretty big spine because... Um, I think by the time it gets filled with memorabilia and other things, it, it needs that. So I think that's a, yeah, it's a three inch spine. We may not do quite that much on the one I'm going to show you. Anyway, so that's the idea. Use any papers you have in your stash. I've kind of been going on during this COVID time of, um, you know, use your stash, use your stash. So that's what we'll do. And I'll show you how I try to keep things organized. Um, I think I'm going to use this tape today. It's, uh, this is, it's like score tape, but it doesn't have the, you know, the tape runner. It's just loose. I have three or four rolls. I don't know where it came from, but I may use that today. I've been using the Aileen's glue, so I'll use that and some scissors. But um, here's how I try to keep things straight. I've got my cutter and my um, scoreboard stacked on my desk. And I have this box where I just stick the smalls, the little things that I've maybe put together or cut out, but I don't want them to get lost because I'm probably going to use them in a project. And I just keep them in here until the project's over and then I divide them out. 
kind of like this. These are um, little envelopes. These, as you see, are rectangles, and then there are some for circles and ovals. And so those will all get split out into those. And this big baby is my, um, I keep all my bigger papers in here during a project. Um, and whatever else is on my desk in the way so that that way I can move things easily and then um, the other thing that I do oh, 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 oh here's one where's the big purple one here it is when I store my papers if it's like this if it's eight and a half by eleven I, I don't buy the twelve by twelve if it's eight and a half by eleven it goes into one of those hanging file boxes I have a folder for each color of the rainbow, not every color in the world. So like pink has to go in with red and stuff. And I, I have a folder for patterns and then a folder behind it for solids of that. So this would go in like the beige solids. And then this one would be a beige pattern. And I keep the big pieces or close to, you know, this size just down in the folder. But inside the folder I keep one of these heavy um, they're called job ticket holders they're just a really heavy um, plastic folder and I know you see some bigger pages in there right now that's because I'm working on a project but at the end of it everything this must have been purple so everything purple um, patterned that is smaller than eight and a half by 11 will go in here. So it's in that folder and I can just pull it out like if I need, you know, if I'm gonna make a project or something, I'll pull it out and use these first before I go for the bigger sheets of paper. So maybe that will help you. I am the least organized person in the world. So uh, anyway, that's that. And uh, let me just make sure where the camera is because it's totally different today. I am back in my craft room and I'm so, so, so excited to be back in here. I had this room and then we had a guest who came for two weeks, but she stayed for eight months. So during that time, we ended up purchasing her a bed because you can't put somebody on a cot forever and ever. And she took over this room and my crafts sort of disintegrated since things were either in her room and she was asleep or they were in the dining room but I couldn't find them and it's been a big mess in there so I'm just really really happy to be back in here it's a mess but it's my mess and it's going to get cleaned up and uh, I kind of know where things are right now so I'm very excited and the sun is just shining in this morning it's a beautiful day so Here's how we're going to make this album. It is roughly five and a half wide. I think I ended up making it the cover six wide by eight and a half tall. So the pages are five and a half wide and eight inches tall. So if you take a sheet like this and score it down the middle, um, that's what you're going to want to do. That paper had something printed on the other side, so I'm glad that I caught that before I started using it. Um, so this is 11, so we want five and a half, which is here. It sure doesn't look like half, does. oh I see. We wanted the six and a half. All right, I'm off to a bad start already. So you wanna score it down the middle. <laughs> and make a nice fold. Take your next sheet Cut it in half the same direction. So you're cutting it to be five and a half inches wide. Let's see if I can get that right this time. And then you're going to score it. Now, what we're going for is an open pocket out here on this end. So we want to score half a um, quarter of an inch here here and here okay so that we leave the one end open so let's do that now I'll speed up the parts you don't need to see and then of course always snip off your 
your odd corner. Should make less bulk when you fold it. So this, you know, on the first one that I did, I put it on the front, but I think on this one, I'm going to put this folded bit on the inside for the pocket. So what you'll end up with is a <clears throat> large pocket out here for a photo mat. Now we have this piece of paper left, and so I think I'm going to use it <clears throat> to make a sort of a folder type page. In fact, I'm going to cut a half inch off the end of this. I'll show you what I'm going to do. Cut a half inch and then score a half inch. Okay. And I didn't forget. I said I'm going to round the corners. And I'm scoring a half inch because I have an idea for this one that's going to take up a little bit more space. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clip those pesky corners. It's always good not to have a corner sticking out there to deal with. So now let's make a smaller one to fit inside of this. So it's going to be like this. You'll have it over on this facing page. <coughs> and then you're going to have a smaller one of these just inside it. So this one is eight and a half high. Let's do one six. Let's try six inches high. So again, it's it's this page, and then you're gonna cut it. Let's see how wide this one is. One, two, three, four, five. This one's five inches wide. So you want it five wide and six tall. And then we want to score again at a half inch. crooked, wasn't it? Well, that was... Alright, let's try this again. Alright, there's the correct mark. So now I have to just be careful. Um, so, we're going to have this with this one inside it. And... Maybe even a smaller one coming off of that. But anyway, so there's that. And now I said that I was going to do some stitching. So what we have to do is go ahead and create the page without assembling it before we put the stitches on the patterned paper. Um, let's see if I have enough pattern paper in here or shall I run and get some oops oh there's one now uh, that is part of the kit and so is this in fact I'll just insert while I'm looking through paper you can look at the entire kit so that you can kind of get an idea of what all is is in there and I'll figure out which ones I'm going to use. How's that? All right, I'm back having um, done all the things I told you. I rounded all the corners. One corner rounder bit the dust. The other one, I really don't like this one. Um, what does it say? Martha Stewart, darn it. Um, it uh, when you punch with it, it leaves this little, now I've already cut them off with a scissor. Let's see if I can find one. No, it, it leaves this little strange, uh, like a, a dip 
on each end and I end up taking the scissors and trying to straighten it out and sometimes it looks really wonky when I get done so I'm not too happy with that one and the other one was a project life one and the this was the first page I did it punched down and it would not let up I even hit it on the table nothing worked so uh, just one more thing yesterday my um, computer monitor I have my screen and then I have a separate monitor where I, I put all my digital designs while I'm doing them and then this side can have files and it just bit the dust so I had to order a new one of those and of course you know with COVID things aren't coming anyway so I've I rounded the corners and I inked all of my edges both the decorative paper as well as the base pages so they're ready to assemble. I wanted to show you, I did um, zigzag stitch these. Probably, if you have never stitched paper before, you don't want to round your corners because it's a whole lot easier to stitch up to a corner and turn. But um, I went ahead and attempted to follow the rounded corners. This was my um, scrap paper. I wanted to show you, this is with a tension of five on my machine. It's a really for me it's a very high tension but that's what was required to make it look right and then this was a zigzag at three and I decided three was too big so I went down to a two and that's the size I used um, so I just zigzagged around the pages and what I did whoops oh no well I'm missing one oh no I know why that's where the oh that was scary that's where this pocket goes so there's not one there and you can see the pocket messed up because there was apparently some wet glue and it it stuck. I'm going to cover all these things up. That's what you do. You don't say you made a mistake. You just say I'm covering it up. So, um, where were we? Where were we? Um, anyway, so I stitched all these. This one, um, I cut it and then it turned out I was an inch off. So, this is a border that's in the kit and I just trimmed it to match and put the border on the on the page these this is that pocket don't forget when you're rounding corners you know this is the top of the pocket and these will fold in but you know you have to round this too and then you can snip off this edge um, these are the little pages that go on the inside so everything is stitched Oh, I know what I was going to say. I hold them up to the window, and whichever one is larger, I can see through this that this one is bigger. So I sew on the smaller side to be sure I remain on it, and then it's taken care of on the bigger side. Now, we've got the base and your measurements. It's basically just 8.5 by 11 folded and maybe trimmed down some for these smaller ones. I rounded the corners, I inked the edges. Now it's time to assemble. And I said I was gonna use this um, unknown score tape. I have a feeling it's from, what is that channel, like HSN, that my mother shops at all the time. I have a big feeling that's where that came from. Anyway, so let's put this pocket on. I'm not going to be using this score tape on here at least because it doesn't fit. Let's see if it'll fit on these others. I bet it will. Yeah, it's half inch tape, I suppose. And I have done quarter inch accidentally on some of them. So we'll go ahead and do this first. This is a half inch. I bet I'm out of the camera, or I. Let's see if she's doing it again. Let me just look. Yeah, you guys need me over here. The camera is in a really strange place for me today. I don't know why. It's um, it's on an, it's on a tripod that I use for painting mostly when I'm outdoors. And then um, so that'll go there. This will go inside it. So. It's on an easel, and then it's, I mean, a tripod, and then on the tripod I have one of those little, I guess it's another tripod, but it, um, you know, it's eh, flexible, that's the word, flexible. And 
strangely. The, the little wiggly one doesn't stay still. I don't know if anyone else has that problem. Mine just won't stay in place. So the, the camera sort of moves. Surely there's a better setup than this because right now it's right against my leg. And if I move, I'll bump, you know. Anyway, such are the trials. Okay, so the way I'm going to do it is find something to lift that with. Whoops. <laughs> okay, no problem, no problem. I'm going to set this one inside the other one first. Make sure they're right side up. And this one's right side up and I want this more or less in the center of that one it's more important if, if it's got a hangover it's better to hang over down here than back there because you want the two folds right together and then we'll lift that and had I been smart which I wasn't I would have put this on before I glued this down. Oh, looky there. No, nope, doesn't go far enough. So we have to make a decision here. Well, I don't think there's much of a decision. I'll just have to figure out something there to make it look better. Sorry about that. You would normally... No, no, it's crooked. Um, you would normally have put this down before you did your decorative paper. I was in a hurry because I wanted to get the, um, I wanted to be sure I remembered to stitch. I never, I never stitch. And then I get it all put together and say, oh, I didn't stitch. So I wanted to do that. And as a result now, I don't have that covered up. So one thing you can do, and I've done this before, is um, take another piece just like this glue it down over it and restitch it. Nobody is ever the wiser. Now there's that one. Just make sure it's nice and stitch, I mean not stitch down, press down. There we go. Now and now we have this pocket pocket I'm just gonna use some glue and there happens to be some Elmer's sitting here so I'll use that um, the Elmer's comes out a lot faster than the Aileen's or Eileen's and so be careful you may be used to it I am no longer used to Elmer's glue okay so I want to put this just a little bit away from the uh, the crease. I don't want it right down in the crease. So I'm going to put that there. And you could put it, you know, even all the way up to the the very edge. It doesn't matter. You also can use your bone folder or whatever tool you have on hand rather than your finger. There you go. So, it wasn't that easy. And so there's the very first part of our album made. And what we will do is we're just going to um, repeat back to the top. We're going to make another base and figure out some decorations. They may not be exactly this. We may not have, you know, a pocket first, these fold out second. You know, we, we will do some variations on that. But this is essentially what you do for each album. I also have this um, 
little folio that I made and I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, I got the idea from Yvonne Preston during the night one night, so I it was late. I may or may not have gotten it right, but this is just one sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper folded this way and that, and you make a couple of pockets and decorate it. It was really easy, so I'm gonna show you how to do this. But we will finish our album first, and hopefully I'll finish this one that was originally my um, my demo model that I was showing you and didn't show you because of various things, including being out of the camera. So, um, yeah, I have just a little bit more decorating to do inside here, and I found a, I really like this pocket. It's an easy pocket to make, and I found one laying around here. It's here um, in in the stash, so I'll be using it for sure in this other album. The front of this one is the way I usually make them, with just some sort of a name or, um, you know, kind of a title page and um, then a pocket on the front. So <clears throat> something like that will be here probably. Um, and these, you'll notice that I ink these very lightly. This one was more grungy, I guess. And so this other one will be, you know, kind of lighter in nature and um, knocking over my glue. And so just, you know, barely a little bit of, of ink on the edges. And you can still see that Elmer's glue where I glued the pages. You've got to glue them a little bit before you stitch or things are just going to slide around but um, hopefully that will calm down so that's it for now and I'll be back thanks for watching and thank you so much all of you who have subscribed here are the papers and the tags these are um, journaling cards and some of the tags and just some ephemera and I've gone ahead and, and cut all those out. Some of them have the holes punched. I really like the little ephemera pieces. I usually back them. I haven't backed all of these. Some music and a map. Um, here are just some scraps of the, the pages because I've already well, I've already used them. Um, oh, here are some tags. I always like tags. The floral paper. Uh, this is a, a border, and it's not this big. I just, you don't want to know. Um, a nice grid with some flowers. I kind of went in two different directions with this. So you could do the sweets and things, or you can do more of a traditional ladies' tea party. This one's fun, and there's also one like this with sort of pink mixed in with the gray. Now here are some of the pages, and you know, I was having all those printer issues, so these only printed on one side. I printed a whole bunch, <laughs> and my husband's like, why don't you quit trying and just print something that doesn't print all over the whole page? And I said, well, I can use these, because what I'm going to do, I've already kind of glued them together just a bit, and I'm going to stitch around the edges. So. Um, you have some writing pages, and this is a frame, so I've done a bunch of those. And my plan is to make a signature with these pages and sandwich it between the two folio bits, which will be the other two signatures. So it'll go like this, and then we'll do a cover probably in a different video. So that's the plan. All right, I'm back having um, done all the things I told you. I 
rounded all the corners. One corner rounder bit the dust. The other one, I really don't like this one. Um, what does it say, Martha Stewart? Darn it. Um, it uh, when you punch with it, it leaves this little... Now, I've already cut them off with the scissor. Let's see if I can find one. No. It, it leaves this little strange... Uh, like a, a dip on each end and I end up taking the scissors and trying to straighten it out and sometimes it looks really wonky when I get done so I'm not too happy with that one and the other one was a Project Life one and the, this was the first page I did it punched down and it would not let up I even hit it on the table nothing worked so uh, just one more thing yesterday my um, computer monitor I have my screen and then I have a separate monitor where I, I put all my digital designs while I'm doing them and then this side can have files and it just bit the dust so I had to order a new one of those and of course you know with COVID things aren't coming anyway so I've, I rounded the corners and I inked all of my edges both the decorative paper as well as the base pages so they're ready to assemble. I wanted to show you, I did um, zigzag stitch these. Probably, if you have never stitched paper before, you don't wanna round your corners because it's a whole lot easier to stitch up to a corner and turn. But um, I went ahead and attempted to follow the rounded corners. This was my um, scrap paper. I wanted to show you, this is with a tension of five on my machine. It's a really for me, it's a very high tension, but that's what was required to make it look right. And then this was a zigzag at three, and I decided three was too big, so I went down to a two, and that's the size I used. Um, so I just zigzagged around the pages, and what I did, oops, oh no. Well, I'm missing one. Oh no, I know why. That's where the, oh, that was scary. That's where this pocket goes, so there's not one there, and. You can see the pocket messed up because there was apparently some wet glue and it, it stuck. I'm going to cover all these things up. That's what you do. You don't say you made a mistake. You just say I'm covering it up. So, um, well, where were we? Where were we? Um, anyway, so I stitched all these. This one, um, I cut it and then it turned out I was an inch off. So, this is a border that's in the kit and I just trimmed it to match and put the border on the on the page these this is that pocket don't forget when you're rounding corners you know this is the top of the pocket and these will fold in but you know you have to round this too and then you can snip off this edge um, these are the little pages that go on the inside so everything is stitched Oh, I know what I was going to say. I hold them up to the window, and whichever one is larger, I can see through this that this one is bigger. So I sew on the smaller side to be sure I remain on it, and then it's taken care of on the bigger side. Now, we've got the base and your measurements. It's basically just 8.5 by 11 folded and maybe trimmed down some for these smaller ones. I rounded the corners, I inked the edges. Now it's time to assemble. And I said I was gonna use this um, unknown score tape. I have a feeling it's from, what is that channel, like HSN, that my mother shops at all the time. I have a big feeling that's where that came from. Anyway, so let's put this pocket on. I'm not going to be using the score tape on here at least because it doesn't fit. Let's see if it'll fit on these others. I bet it will. Yeah, it's half inch tape, I suppose. And I have done quarter inch accidentally on some of them. So we'll go ahead and do this first. This is a half inch. I bet I'm out of the camera, aren't I? Let's see if she's doing it again. Let me just look. Yeah, you guys need me over here. The camera is in a really strange place for me today. I don't know why. It's um, it's on an 
It's on a tripod that I use for painting mostly when I'm outdoors. And then, um, so that'll go there. This will go inside it. So it's on an easel and then it's, I mean a tripod and then on the tripod I have one of those little, I guess it's another tripod, but it, um, you know, it's eh, flexible. That's the word, flexible. And strangely, the the little wiggly one doesn't stay still. I don't know if anyone else has that problem. Mine just won't stay in place. So the, the camera sort of moves. Surely there's a better setup than this. Because right now, it's right against my leg. And if I move, I'll bump, you know. Anyway, such are the trials. Okay. So the way I'm going to do it is, find something to lift that with. Oops. <laughs> okay, no problem, no problem. I'm going to set this one inside the other one first. Make sure they're right side up. And this one's right side up and I want this more or less in the center of that one it's more important if, if it's got a hangover it's better to hang over down here than back there because you want the two folds right together and then we'll lift that and had I been smart which I wasn't I would have put this on before I glued this down. Oh, looky there. No, nope, doesn't go far enough. So we have to make a decision here. Well, I don't think there's much of a decision. I'll just have to figure out something there to make it look better. Sorry about that. You would normally, no, no, it's crooked. Um, you would normally have put this down before you did your decorative paper. I was in a hurry because I wanted to get the, um, I wanted to be sure I remembered to stitch. I never, I never stitch. And then I get it all put together and say, oh, I didn't stitch. So I wanted to do that. And as a result now, I don't have that covered up. So one thing you can do, and I've done this before, is um, take another piece just like this glue it down over it and restitch it. Nobody is ever the wiser. Now there's that one. Just make sure it's nice and stitch, I mean not stitch down, press down. There we go. Now and now we have this pocket Thing for the pocket I'm just gonna use some glue and there happens to be some Elmer's sitting here so I'll use that um, the Elmer's comes out a lot faster than the Aileen's or Eileen's and so be careful you may be used to it I am no longer used to Elmer's glue okay so I want to put this just a little bit away from the the, uh, the crease. I don't want it right down in the crease. So I'm going to put that there. And you could put it, you know, even all the way up to the the very edge. It doesn't matter. And you also can use your bone folder or whatever tool you have on hand rather than your finger. There you go. So, it wasn't that easy. And so there's the very first part of our album made. And what we will do is we're just going to um, repeat back to the top. We're going to make another base 
and figure out some decorations. They may not be exactly this. We may not have, you know, a pocket first, these fold out second. You know, we, we will do some variations on that. But this is essentially what you do for each album. I also have this um, little folio that I made and I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, I got the idea from Yvonne Preston during the night one night, so I it was late. I may or may not have got it right, but this is just one sheet of eight and a half by eleven paper folded this way and that, and you make a couple of pockets and decorate it. It was really easy. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. But we will finish our album first and hopefully I'll finish this one that was originally my um my demo model that I was showing you and didn't show you because of various things, including being out of the camera. So, um, yeah, I have just a little bit more decorating to do inside here. And I found, a, I really like this pocket. It's an easy pocket to make, and I found one laying around here. It's here um, in, in the stash, so I'll be using it for sure in this other album. The front of this one is the way I usually make them with just some sort of a name or um, you know kind of a title page and um, then a pocket on the front so <clears throat> something like that will be here probably. Um, and these you'll notice that I ink these very lightly. This one was more grungy I guess and so this other one will be you know, kind of lighter in nature and um, knocking over my glue. And so just, you know, barely a little bit of, of ink on the edges. And you can still see that Elmer's glue where I glued the pages. You've got to glue them a little bit before you stitch or things are just going to slide around. But um, hopefully that will calm down. So that's it for now. And I'll be back. Thanks for watching and thank you so much, all of you who have subscribed.